G'day guys, Dave Lee coming at you once again. And finally, by popular demand, I'm finally doing a series of videos on my Blu-ray and DVD television series collection. Of course, in the past, I've done a whole bundle of videos on my Blu-ray movie collection, my Disney collection. But what I haven't tackled yet is my TV series collection, which a whole lot of you have been asking for over the last year or so. So I'm finally getting around to doing it. Now, I did put a poll out there to all my subscribers asking whether you'd like this to be one long video or a bunch of individual videos separated by genre. The overwhelming majority of you guys actually said you preferred just one long video, which I thought was fair enough. I've actually sat there, I've filmed the whole thing. I'm filming this introduction later, but putting it at the beginning, you know, because YouTube magic and all that. But I sat here for so long and there's so much footage that unfortunately I am gonna have to cut it down into a couple of videos. So this is gonna be a series of maybe just two or three videos and we're gonna start here today with comedies and sitcoms. There's a whole lot of them, let's get into it. Alright, so let's do it. Let's start with the comedies and sitcoms from my Blu-ray and DVD TV series collection. The entire series of 30 Rock. Didn't watch all of this. I think maybe I watched maybe three or four seasons. I really enjoyed it. It started teetering off a little bit. But one day I do want to kind of finish that off because it was a lot of fun. It's a really easy, light comedy to watch. And Tina Fey is fantastic. And Alec Baldwin is great. Um, and of course, Tr Tracy Morgan is just one of the greatest comedic talents of the last decade, I reckon. I'm very, very underrated. Um, I really like this show. I really, really loved it. We got some great Aussie TV here. Uh, Russell Coit, all Aussie adventures. If you are an Aussie, you know this man. He is an icon. He's basically, for those out there who don't come from Australia, this show is presented as like a, a satire, a mockumentary of these, just these really bad outback travel shows that we used to have here. I'm sure we still have them. I haven't seen them on TV for a long time. There was two full seasons of that, plus a TV movie. I didn't think the TV movie was that great. Repeat a lot of the jokes from the series. It just wasn't as funny. Another great Aussie series is The Adventures of Lano and Woodley. This is probably my favourite Australian series of all time. Maybe next to Russell Coit's All Aussie Adventures. This is fantastic. These are an Australian comedy duo. Uh, I've had the pleasure of seeing them multiple times live. I, I love them and I love this show. I discovered this show when I was a kid and um, I just, I've loved it ever since. It's just a lot of great, great fun. And then Woodley went on and got his own show. It's not a spin-off, um, but it's... I, I really I enjoyed this. It wasn't as good as this. I always feel like um, these kind of comedians work better when they're in a team and then when they go off on their own, it's not the same magic. But this was a bit of a fun show. Woodley's comedy is kind of uh, inspired by like Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin. All that kind of stuff. I just really... it's just really sweet beautiful comedy. I really enjoyed this show too. The Ali G Show. Uh, I, I love this. This is just great British, again, more satire comedy, I suppose. Characters like Ali G, Borat, Bruno, all spawned from this. Just really great. I just have a lot of fun watching this kind of just stupid stuff. We got the entire series of Arrested Development here. I was a huge fan of the first three seasons. Loved it. Just this great cult comedy uh, show. And then they went and they did season four. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't think I, I, I even finished it. It was just a bit weird. There's apparently like a remix version of it on Netflix, which is apparently easier to watch. There's also a fifth season coming soon, or it's out already. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it come up on my Netflix anyway. Uh, but that was, that was a really, really great show. This is a show not a huge fan of it's the big bang theory this is one of old mate rick's favorite series uh we, he's got the box set here which has the first five seasons in there and then he's got what the next five seasons there individually as well as you can see he's, he's not watched all of them they play these on tv so much anyway so oh, actually when it first started i hated it and then i came to kind of like it a little bit i enjoyed it for a bit um but then it's just again it's just I just, I can't, I can't do it. This was a great quirky little series, Bored to Death, starring Zach Galifianakis, Ted Danson, and Jason Schwartzman. Really enjoyed this. I don't know if there was a third season. 
I can't remember. It was just, uh, I know these are the only two you could get, I think anyway. Uh, it was a great quirky little show, but it, it did, it got axed. Now this is an HBO show, but I feel like it just didn't, it didn't get its time. It's another one of those little cult things. Had a big cult following, but never really took off as an iconic show, I suppose. This is the kind of thing that I think would thrive very well as a Netflix ex exclusive series these days. Uh, I think it was just a little bit too before its time, if I can say that. Uh, but yeah, it was a really fun little show. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I only have the first season of this. Apparently this is really fantastic. I never actually got around to watching this one, that's why I didn't buy any more seasons. It's also all on Netflix now as well, so it kind of renders this one redundant, but I will check that out at some point. I'm like touch and go with Andy Samberg stuff, Sometimes I love him, sometimes I, I just don't really like him that much. So uh, we'll see how we go with that one. We got the entire series of Boston Legal here. James Spader and William Shatner. A lot of fun. It's like a comedy drama, kind of courtroom drama kind of thing. I haven't watched all of it, but I've watched a great deal of it. I, I really, really liked it. I really do need to get around to finishing that one off. A really great series if you haven't seen that one. Californication, absolutely love this series. Uh, again, I don't think I've watched the final season of this, uh, but we've got all of it here. Again, this is an example of what they do in the Australian market. They bring out one season, this really nice little box set thing, and then the rest come out in just standard little cases. And then they might just bring one random season out on Blu-ray, and then go back to just doing DVDs only. It's, it annoys me, it annoys me so much when they do stuff like that. But that's the entire series of Californication. Great comedy drama, if you haven't seen it, Check it out because it's so fun. And David Duchovny is just fantastic in this. I, lo I love this series. Community. Now, is this the entire series? I'm not sure. We've got up to season five anyway, right there. Um, I really enjoyed this at the beginning, but again, it's one of those shows that I felt kind of teetered off towards the end. I'm a big Chevy Chase fan. That's really why I was watching it. And then there were like all these behind the scenes drama with him and it turned out that he was just very, very difficult to work with. And he left the show at some point and I just, I kind of got disinterested at that time. Derek, this is Ricky Gervais. Uh, when I say Ricky Gervais, people probably think of crude, rude, just really offensive humor. But this is just such a sweet, beautiful little show. He did three seasons of this, or two seasons of this, sorry, and a, and a special TV special. Just such a gorgeous little show. I love it so much, look at him. How can you not, how can you not love that little cheeky smile? This is one of the, the sweetest characters you'll ever see on TV. I couldn't, I couldn't recommend this show enough. Again, this is a case of season one being released on Blu-ray and then only being able to get season two and three on DVD. That's all on Netflix now. Pretty much like the rest of Gervais's back catalog, which you will see in this video. I love the guy and I love that show. Eastbound and Down, are they the only two seasons of that I've got? That's up to season three. I've got season one somewhere, but I've lost it. I don't know where it is. That's kind of kind of strange. I've just lost it somewhere. But anyway, I do have season one of that as well. Later seasons, they only released on DVD again, and we just never picked them up. It was, it was fun at first, and it just got a bit stupider and stupider and stupider, and just got to a point where it was like, this isn't really that funny anymore. I guess that's why it got axed. The entire series plus the movie of Entourage. Is that even the movie? No, that's not the movie, but I have the movie somewhere. That is Entourage right there. I loved this show. This is one of the first like drama shows, adult kind of drama shows I ever really got into. I guess I was like early to mid high school when this show was on and I just absolutely loved it. A lot of great fun. Again, it's all about the movie industry and it's actually based on Mark Wahlberg's early years in uh, the film industry with his own personal Entourage. All those came out on DVD, then they released the final season on Blu-ray, and then they released the rest of them on Blu-ray, of course, um, but well, I haven't ended up rebuying them all. I don't need to. Don't think I'd revisit it again anytime soon, but it was a really, really great show. And here's a show which is almost impossible to hate. Everybody loves Raymond. This is another one of my just favorite comedy series, sitcom series. Uh, when I was a kid, I just, I loved this kind of stuff. And I would get all these DVDs, all the seasons, and I'd sit there, I'd watch a couple episodes before I went to school. I'd come home, I'd watch a couple of episodes more. And it was just a whole lot of fun. This is so weird. One season came out in the slipcover and the rest didn't. They did so many weird things like that here in the Australian market. But that's the entire series of Everybody Loves Raymond and I, 
I do, I love it, I love it so much. Great, great sitcom. Great English sitcom here, episodes. It's seasons one to three there and season four there. I believe there's been a fifth season but they haven't played it here in Australia yet which is a bit annoying because I wanna see how it ends. I really, really like this show. They brought the first season out on Blu-ray and then just the rest on DVD. So we just ended up just going, just buy the DVD because it's, it's not it's not, not a huge deal. And I really like it, Matt LeBlanc's in there. He plays himself uh, post Friends as like a struggling actor in Hollywood trying to get work after Friends living in the shadow of Joey Tribbiani. Really, really great show. Great little British American comedy. I would highly recommend this if you haven't seen it and you're a fan of Friends or you're a fan of British comedy or really, really good show. Extras. This is the complete series plus the special. This is uh, Ricky Gervais' his first series following The Office. I really enjoyed this. It's a lot of fun. It's got Steve Merchant in there as well. There were the two series uh, Ricky and Steve did together. I don't think that this is as good as the rest of his work. This is probably my least favourite one of his series, but I still really 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 love it and would highly recommend it another like weird like sardonic take on the film and television industry where he plays like a, a background extra a lot of fun flight of the concords this is a really great kiwi series really great new zealand has just some really weird wacky comedy stuff uh, this was a series they moved they were a uh, like a folk comedy uh, music duo they did this special for hbo and it like blew up it was really really successful so hbo let them do their own series they moved to america and did this series it's so funny so just weird and wacky music comedy. I believe Taika Waititi, who directed uh, Thor Ragnarok, directed a couple of episodes of the, these, if not wrote a couple of them as well. I'm not too sure, but Taika did have uh, some part in this series. Uh, really, 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 really fun. I really highly recommend this if you're looking for some great fun comedy to check out. Hey baby, do you uh, hear the blues are calling? Toss salads and scrambled eggs, I do. Because that's Frasier, the complete series. Oh man, I love Frasier. Again, one of my favorite sitcoms, but this has to like take the cake of like one of my number ones. Num one of my number ones. This was just a great comedy series. Just such a, just a clever, clever series. This lasted for 11 seasons as well, which is just quite remarkable. Uh, as a follow up from Cheers, um, to have this guy playing the same character on television for at least 20 years is just crazy. That's like unthinkable these days, but uh, Frasier was great. Kelsey Grammer is just fantastic. And it's another example of just a really, really fantastic ensemble comedy cast. And again, the comedy in this was just so smart, so clever. And um, I love this show. I could revisit this over and over and over again. Now this one is probably my favorite series of all time. I reckon I've watched this more than any other series ever. And that is Friends. Now I originally bought the entire series on DVD. I managed to get some of them in these cool little uh, packages here, but some of them I just kind of missed out on for some reason or another. I think they just went out of print, but I don't watch these DVDs anymore. I managed to import this one from America, which is the uh, the complete series on Blu-ray, which I just, I love. And they're all uh, uh, high definition, expanded aspect ratio. So they're all in, uh, in widescreen as opposed to full Four, three. Come to this great little pack here. You get uh, this little book in there, which I really love. And there is the, the complete series right there. Now they released a box set here in Australia uh, and the UK as well, but it was just like a, just a sleeve with all the individual Blu-ray cases in there. I adore this show so much, I can never ever get tired of watching this. I reckon I've probably watched this at least once a year. Since at least when I got into it, which was probably around maybe 2003, 2004 when the show finished, is actually when I really got into it. Um, and I have only just finished watching it over again and I think I'm gonna start again soon. It's just an easy show to put on when you go to bed, just watch an episode or two and then and go to sleep. I just, I love it. I love it so much. It's just, just the best, best comedy ever made. And of course it was followed by one of the worst comedies ever made, Joey. Ah, look, I'm being harsh on it. This show was actually not bad. I actually kind of enjoyed Joey. First season was a bit rank. Second season was actually picking up a bit. I was really starting to enjoy it and then it got axed because people just had given up on it by that point. But it was getting better and I kind of enjoyed it. I just wish, I wish I'd given it maybe a little bit more time. Just imagine we could have had, we could have really had 10 seasons of Joey by now. 
just crazy to think of it. That's how long ago this was. But I didn't mind that show, and I do I do watch it occasionally after I finish watching Friends or I attempt to watch a few episodes anyway. But well, there you go. I would, if you can still get your hands on this, you haven't seen it. It's worth a watch. We got Will Smith's breakout role in The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Again, this is another example of a show where you could get a couple of seasons in Australia and then had to import the rest from overseas, which then annoys me because I got three seasons in slipcovers and three not. This is a great show. Really loved it. Um, we've we've only just uh, finished watching these. My, my girlfriend was watching uh, the entire series, and I, I was kind of I popped in and out to, to watch an episode here and there. I believe they're all on Netflix at the moment. That's how she was watching them. Really, really great, funny show. I love the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. If you're a Will Smith fan, you haven't seen this show. Just check it out, it's so good. Hello ladies, this is uh, Stephen Merchant, the guy who did uh, The Office and Extras with Ricky Gervais. This is his first like solo series, I believe. The only one he's done so far, I'm not too sure. I haven't kept up with his work. This is great, he did one series and a movie. I think the movie's in this here, yeah. It was like a mini series for HBO. A lot of fun, I really I really enjoyed this, had a lot of fun with this. Steve, Stephen Merchant is very funny, really smart, witty guy. And I enjoyed this. If, if you like him, if you like his work, I'd definitely recommend this because it's it's a bit of fun. Home Improvement, the complete series. Now this is actually Disney as well. So maybe I should leave this off for a Disney update video, but I'm gonna do it here, television. This is a brilliant, brilliant co uh, comedy sitcom series starring Tim Allen, of course, the voice of Buzz Lightyear, but everyone should know him as Tim the Toolman Taylor from Home Improvement. This is just such a great, great sitcom, very funny, and a, a, another series that has a, a great ensemble cast. And uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas is one of the kids in this as well, who of course was a staple of 90s uh, Disney kids movies and stuff like that. So really, really, really fun show, and one that I think I do have to revisit again sometime too, because I just, I adore it. It's so good, and Tim Allen is so much fun. So I remember watching this as a kid. This is probably like the first sitcom that I, I watched as a kid. My dad loved it, I remember sitting there watching it with him, and just so much fun. I don't think so, Tim. How I Met Your Mother. Now, this is, I don't usually buy season box sets when it's not the complete series, but I really wanted to get into this show, and the, the box set of the first five seasons was cheaper than buying them individually, and then um, I went and I bought the last four seasons of it, individually and kind of look back now and go oh, it's a little bit annoying but it's 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 okay it is what it is really like this show not one that's held up as a classic for me the last season was pretty crap but um it was it's a good show and it was enjoyable while i was watching it i don't think it's one i would revisit anytime soon maybe if ever maybe one day but um i did enjoy it when it was on hung another show that got cancelled in its prime this was just so good this guy becomes like a gigolo and uh, I can't remember why, but it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. First two seasons came out on Blu-ray. Our third season only came out on DVD in Australia, so I had to import the Blu-ray from the States. I, I don't believe there was a, a fourth season. That was it, they only did the three. Sadly, cut in its prime. HBO, there's this whole period back then, like 2010, all these shows are kind of from the same era 2010 2012 where they did all these shows they had them on for like two or three seasons and axed them and they were like really great shows again things that would thrive on netflix these days mad about you really great sitcom from the 90s this predates friends lisa kudrow is in this as like uh supporting characters playing the character of ursula who works at a uh, at a cafe and of course ursula in friends is phoebe's twin sister so they kind of they found these ways to tie all these shows together back in the 90s i think it was like a really really cool little thing uh but man about you this is a really great show helen hunt paul riser are the two main stars i think this went for maybe five or six seasons maybe a little less maybe a little more um but these are the only two they ever released here but it's a really really good show we've got the two series of life too short well the, the series and the special as uh, as a lot of the early ricky gervais shows did they did one or two series and then a special like uh derek the office extras they all did it um great show this one centers around warwick davis and it's a mockumentary about him struggling Struggling to get work, he opens up um, like a, a dwarf um, a modeling agency, acting agency, and basically ends up exploiting them all. And it's just it's just a crazy bundle of fun. Of course, it's the brainchild of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant right there. This is like the last show they did together than um, Idiot Abroad, which they were both, uh, I guess both series were running at the same time. It's such a fun show, and it's got some really great appearances from some uh, great A-list celebrities there. We got like Sting, Helena 
Bonham Carter, Johnny Depp's in there, Liam Neeson in one of the funniest bits of comedy on any TV show I've ever seen is the bit with Liam Neeson. Just a, just a really fun show. I, I highly, highly recommend this. Warwick Davis is, is so much fun. I love the guy and yeah, good show. I recommend checking that out. We've got Little Britain. I was never a huge fan of this one. A little bit silly. I like the two guys on it, but I just was never a huge fan of the show. Maybe, maybe being a little bit older now and I guess more uh, in tune with British comedy, I suppose that maybe I was when this was first on. I, I probably will enjoy it, but uh, yeah, I, just, I would have to get around to it and find, find time for that. But there you go. We've got the three seasons of Little Britain right there. We've got The King of Queens. This is another one of my favourite sitcoms. I don't know, did this ever go down? as like a classic. I don't hear too much about it. I don't hear people talking about it anymore. It's always on TV but I feel like it never really went down as something like a Friends or a Frasier. Uh, I guess it was more of like a cult thing. I don't know. Maybe it was huge in America but I just never hear about it. I never hear anyone talking about it here in Australia. Uh, but this is a great show. This is probably the I reckon this is the first. This one I reckon is the first box set I ever imported from America. Probably one of my very first uh, Amazon orders. I love this show so much. How good is this? You open the back of the car up and you got all the seasons in there in these little uh, these little packs like that which I think is so cool and then we come around the front here and we've got uh, we've got like all the season guides in there they didn't release a full box set of this in Australia for some time after this and then it was it was sort of like the same idea but it was just a, a straight like square and it just had the picture of the car on it and then it was like on the side was all just the normal cases didn't have this cool flip up thing or this cool thing here I just think this is a great like little ingenious box set for it's just a great series I know this is available in Germany I think on blu-ray I'd love to get it on blu-ray one day so hopefully I'll be able to maybe maybe they'll release it in the American market or something one day I certainly don't see it coming out here on blu-ray but really really great show I love it so much Lethal Weapon. Oh, I love the movies. Haven't watched the show. Actually, I watched a couple of episodes of the show and quite enjoyed it. So I've picked up uh, the, the Blu-ray, the first season, just to check it out at some point. Apparently, they've replaced this guy now. He wasn't, I don't know, some problems backstage or something, and they've had to recast him or change the character or something, which is a bit disappointing. It's supposed to be about these two blokes, but... Uh, but it is what it is, so I'm uh, actually looking forward to checking that out. Got the entire series of Ma Married with Children. This, this was, I think, 11 seasons, so a lot to hold in one hand. This was a, a really fun comedy as well. I think it's one which is maybe a little bit dated. I don't think the humour holds up as well on this show as something like Friends or Frasier or even King of Queens, uh, but I enjoyed this. This is one that I enjoyed as as a kid, and I I, I, I fairly enjoyed it again when I, when I rewatched it all the way through. The earlier seasons are better as is the most case with most things uh, but I kind of really enjoy this one. If you're looking for a, a sitcom, like a classic sitcom that you haven't actually watched, Married with Children's a, a fairly safe bet that you'll find it kind of funny but again, maybe the humour is a little bit dated on this one or maybe Maybe that's why it hasn't held up as such a, a, a big classic in more modern times. Modern Family, another fairly decent sitcom. We really enjoyed it for the first few years, maybe three, four seasons. And then I just kind of felt like it went off the deep end. It's still chugging away, still going. Have six seasons. Again, an example of four seasons released on Blu-ray and then the next two were only released on DVD. I guess sales weren't that great. Uh, it's understandable because the later seasons aren't, aren't as good. But I think it's still, it's still going. It'll be interesting to see how long that series goes for. I really loved that when it first started. I think it's lost a little bit of its charm now. Oh, actually, I've got uh, season seven and eight of that right there as well. So I don't know what it must be up to now. It must be like 10 or 11 or something like that. But yeah, I, I, I have to find time to get back into that show. Of course, Mr. Bean, uh, my favourite like British comedy show other than Monty Python. Uh, this is the 10-year box set that they did. This is the first time... They released all of these on DVD. But all the episodes are out of order for one reason or another. I don't understand why. Uh, there have been more recent box sets, which are like remastered box sets, but all the episodes are in order. But I'm happy with this one. If they do release those remastered uh, episodes on Blu-ray at some point, I would be happy to pick it up again. But for now, I'm happy with my 10-year collection of Mr. Bean. I love this so much. Got the first season of Murphy Brown. I've never watched it. Apparently, it's really good. I think this was like, I got this in a giveaway, so I didn't even pay for this. Apparently, a really good show, though. I think they only released the first uh, season of it here in Australia, uh, which is probably why I never ended up watching it. My Name is Earl. This is a sitcom I just could never get into, hence only having bought one season of it. 
Northern Exposure, um, this is one I never watched. Apparently it's really, really good, so I got it and I just never ended up watching it. Uh, there's quite a few seasons of that, but I only ended up buying the first two. Got The Office, this is the complete uh, two series plus the special. Uh, this is the original uh, UK version with Ricky Gervais. Great, great cringy comedy. Of course, this is where Martin Freeman first started as well. Just a really good show. And of course, I also have David Brent Life on the Road the movie, which I really enjoyed. Some people didn't like it. It doesn't have the same kind of spark as the first one because he didn't write it with uh, Stephen Merchant, but it still is a lot of fun. I still really enjoyed that, but this is just an indisputable classic. You have to watch this. And of course, there is the American version of The Office, which I just absolutely love. Steve Carell is just fantastic on this show, and it's really hard to pick whether I, I like the American or the British one better because they're both just such great shows. And this one. This show had so much steam, it went on for nine years. Of course, when Steve Carell left, which was sort of towards the end, it lost a little bit of, again, that spark, that charm that made it so great in the first place. But it still remained a fairly decent show, which, to its credit, is quite a hard thing to do. But it eventually did run its course and ended it, I think, around the right time. Parks and Rec, this was actually uh, by the creators of The Office, uh, the US one. So it's got that same sort of mockumentary, quirky comedy style. Style. Love it. It's fantastic. Amy Poehler is fantastic on this. Of course, uh, Chris Pratt started on this and uh, just a whole lot of great comedians on there. Oh, I think are fantastic. And of course, Ron Swanson, one of the greatest characters. Great show. If you haven't seen this, highly recommend it, especially if you are a fan of the uh, US version of The Office. It's a lot of fun. Psych, that was another sitcom I just could never really get into. Don't know why we have so many seasons of this. I have a feeling it was like a two for 20 deal at one point. So it was cheap enough to buy a few seasons. Seasons, and we just never really got into it. Even though I hear it's a really great show, I just could never really get into that. We got Round the Twist. This was my favorite show as a kid. It's an Aussie kids show, really quirky, funny, like little horror thriller stories for kids based on a series of short stories by renowned Australian author Paul Jennings. Each series was made like two or three years apart and the cast kept changing. So each season has a different cast. But as a kid, you don't really care about that. Uh, it's, it's such a great little, great little show. I still love this show so much. I could still watch it over and over again. Really fantastic. Got a bunch of Saturday Night Live comedy uh, compilation things here. Steve Martin, Eddie Murphy, that's probably the best one of the lot, I reckon. Mike Myers. Adam Sandler. I used to watch all of these like religiously when I was a kid. Absolutely loved them. Uh, and then some more recent ones like Tracy Morgan, who I love. Will Ferrell, it's got both of his volumes in there. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, and uh, oh, it's a third volume of Will Ferrell there as well. So all of them. I also have this, uh, which is Steve Martin, the TV stuff. So I keep that with my uh, Steve Martin Saturday Night Live. Uh, this has got all of uh, Steve Martin's stand-up specials and NBC specials. It doesn't have his Saturday Night Live stuff on there, so that's why I keep them together. It's got all this other stuff on there too, so that's a really great little box set. I was surprised again that they released this in Australia as a nice little, nice little box set right there. Big fan of Steve Martin. As you might know if you've uh, seen my other collection videos and my movie videos and stuff, I, I absolutely love this guy. I think his comedy might be a little bit dated now, but he's just a very, very funny guy. Got Scrubs, the first six seasons of that. Got bored of this, never watched all of it. I think we only watched maybe up to season four or five. And then uh, that last season was apparently terrible where they changed the entire cast. Uh, so really just lost interest there. But I really enjoyed the first few seasons of that. It's a really great show, but again, just, uh, yeah, just just got crap at the end. I've just realized this is Touchstone Television as well. So technically that's a, that's a Disney series too. Never actually realized that, there you go. Shameless, we have got series one, two, Two, four, five, and six. Could never find season three on, on Blu-ray when we started buying these. I don't know if it's out of print or anything, but you can I just never find it in store. Great series. We've only actually just watched this and I really, really love it. Highly, highly, highly recommended. William H. Macy is so fun in this. Season seven's out on Blu-ray uh, and season eight has just been on TV over this last year. Uh, probably, actually, probably a year ago it was on, uh, but we've only just watched them all. Short Poppies. This is another just really great, quirky New Zealand program. It's got rice or Reese Darby in there, who was actually uh, in Flight of the Concords. Plays like a bunch of different characters in it. It's another like mockumentary thing. I guess you could, I guess you could compare it to something like Parks and Rec, but it's more anthology-ish and it's just very, very obscure, very quirky. I really enjoyed this. So I'd check this out if you haven't seen it and you like this kind of thing. 
The Spoils of Babylon. This is like a silly comedy anthology series. I never actually watched all of it. What I saw was okay. It's got Will Ferrell in there, Jessica Alba, Val Kilmer, Tobey Maguire, Haley Joel Osment, Tim Robbins, Michael Sheen, Kristen Wiig. Got a whole bunch of people in there. Yeah, I just never quite got into it, but it was, it was okay from what I did see of it. Talking about shows that overstayed their welcome, Two and a Half Men, oh my lord. Now I loved this show when it was first on. They played these episodes over and over and over on TV to death that I could probably recite just about every single episode of the early years because they were just on that much. I really loved them. I reckon seasons one to maybe six were probably the prime of this show. Sadly it went on for another six years and even when Charlie Sheen left, after season eight, uh, they went on for another four years with Ashton Kutcher taking over his role and it just really wasn't that good after Charlie Sheen left. I think maybe only watched maybe one season with Ashton Kutcher, but I did pick up the rest because I wanted to complete the collection and one day go back to watching them. And I think I will eventually, but it's not something I'm in, like, in a rush to get to. Weeds, like a comedy drama series, I guess in the same vein as like Shameless. Never ended up watching all of this thing, maybe season one, I was started just didn't finish just one of those shows never got around to watching uh, I don't even know if we've got all of it we've got up to season six but I believe that is on Netflix as well at the moment so when I do want to get around to watching that I'll just stream it on Netflix and we have got Will and Grace this is the entire series minus the new revival series that they've just done they've been reviving all these old shows I really enjoyed this I watched all of this um, I it's not one that again has held up as a classic for me. It's not one that I can go back to over and over and over again, like Friends or King of Queens or Frasier. But I did really love this show when I was watching it. It's a really great show. Again, just not one that held up for me as an absolute classic. All right, that is it. That is all my comedies and sitcoms. Of course, this isn't my entire TV collection. I have dramas, I have animation, and we're gonna do a couple of videos more for them as well. Stay tuned next time where I will be delivering my drama collection. It's quite a big selection of stuff as well. So I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, guys. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos, you like what you've seen, you'd like to see more like this in the future, then please don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen right now, and also hit that like button down below if you're feeling extra generous. Also, don't forget to check out my many social media accounts, and please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.